Naval Station Argentia was the site of a series of chemical and biological aerial spray tests performed by the American military during the mid-1960s to evaluate the readiness of U.S. military vessels for potential chemical and biological attacks. As part of the testing, a combination of the biological agent, Bacillus globigii, and fluorescent zinc cadmium sulfide particles were sprayed from a 4 and C-47 aircraft. Project Shad, Shipboard Hazard and Defense, was conducted in the North Atlantic close to the base. There were 622 of about 4,300 veterans identified as participants in Project Shad. From 1963 through 1970, the Department of Defense was said to have conducted tests to determine the effectiveness of shipboard detection and protective measures against chemical and biological threats and to determine the potential risk to American forces. There is a site known as Site SAM that carries with it some heavy rumors. Apparently, Site SAM is an acronym for Surface to Air Missiles. Site SAME was paved over in between the late 70s and early 80s. This led to some locals particularly becoming suspicious about the testing activities that could have gone on at this location or in the hills behind the site. Why would it be paved if there were not dangerous chemicals or secrets hidden underneath? Maybe they had to make a hard, smooth surface for removing contaminants or unknown property from the hills behind it. We may never know what really went on at Site Sam, but it is definitely an area of interest. It was quoted by someone who was involved in completing the environmental assessment and doing cleanup work after the decommissioning of the base that there were several bunkers that were placed in the ground on an angle with railway tracks. The bunkers were said to be located around the area of Site Sam. Jack Alderson, a retired Navy officer who commanded Army tugboats, told CBS News that he believes the Pentagon used him and other service members to test weapons and tests including agents, vaccines, and decontamination products that have led to serious medical problems including cancer. Secrecy agreements can now be ignored by veterans in order to pursue health care concerns within the Department of Veterans Affairs, the VA. The VA has offered screening programs for veterans who believe they were involved in Department of Defense, DOD, sponsored tests during their service. The Institute of Medicine of the National Academies has commissioned studies of Project SHAD participants. The first, Long-Term Health Effects of Participation in Project SHAD was released in 2007 and found no clear evidence that specific long-term health effects are associated with participation in Project SHAD. The second, Shipboard Hazard and Defense 2, SHAD 2, by IOM's Medical Follow-Up Agency, MFUA, began in 2012 and as of April 2014 is ongoing. While much about the tests is still classified, the DOD has begun to declassify the information. Medically significant information from 12 tests with 4,300 participants Autumn Gold, Copperhead, Shady Grove, Eager Bell, Phases 1 and 2, and Scarlet Sage, Fearless Johnny, Flower Drum, Phases 1 and 2, DTC Test 68-50, DTC Test 69-32, and Purple Sage, has been declassified and released. The tests involved mostly members of the Navy. Current information indicates any medical problems associated with exposure to the substances used in the tests or during cleanup operations would have been apparent shortly after the exposure. Project Copperhead was conducted during January and February of 1965. One of the reasons the test was conducted was to obtain information on the performance of an Aero 14B spray tank jet aircraft weapon system disseminating Bacillus globigii BG, over the open sea in a frigid, marine environment. Ten trials were conducted and for each trial, the biological tracer BG was disseminated from an Aero 14B spray tank mounted on an A-4 aircraft. 
A contactor C-47 aircraft attempted congruent releases of fluorescent particles, FP, just after the BG release. The target ship for the test was the USS Power. Copperhead was conducted in the Atlantic Ocean, off the coast of Newfoundland. The base of operations was the U.S. Naval Station Argentia. Marine and contractor aircraft operated from Ernest Harmon Air Force Base, in Newfoundland. Bacillus species have been associated with acute infections of the ear, meninges, brain lining, urinary tract, lung, heart valve and other body sites, and especially dangerous to those who have a compromised immune system. This information was put out in a statement by the Department of Defense. Medical corpsmen on vessels involved in one of the tests say that ship logs indicate an upsurge in upper respiratory tract infections after the test and some cases of nausea, possibly a reaction to BG. CBC managed to obtain some documentation which stated that sailors on the target ships were called test subjects and only eight of the men wore gas masks. They were the control group in this experiment. Other crewmen were ordered to give throat swabs or gargle samples. After closure of the base in 1994, contamination was extensive but the extent of this damage was kept on the down low. Landfills in the areas contained lead paint, asbestos, polychlorinated biphenyls, dioxins and furans, heavy metals, petroleum hydrocarbons, and a variety of other wastes. When environmental assessments of the area were complete in the mid-1990s, there was evidence of contamination in ground, soil, and pond water at sites across the base. There was even evidence of leaks from chemical storage tanks and pipelines. Many contaminants, including heavy metals and dioxins, were present at levels considered to be a concern for human health. Assessment and remediation of the site were undertaken by the Canadian government between 1996 and 2002 at a cost of well over $100 million. My question is, why do the Canadian taxpayers have to pay the cost for cleanup and damage done by the Americans? Some individuals living in the Argentia region have voiced the concern that the incidence of cancer in their communities is higher than that of the province of Newfoundland and Labrador as a whole. In the early 1990s, an environmental health assessment was conducted in response to media reports of lymphopenia among residents of the Argentia region. It was reported that the assessment did not find statistically significant increases in the rate of miscarriages, stillbirths, or overall mortality. There was a significantly higher rate of brain and bladder cancer in the region, but the authors attributed that to random variability in a small sample. One of the recommendations of the report was the ongoing evaluation of the health of the population in the Argentia region. To my knowledge, that was never conducted to date. I spoke to the husband of a nurse in the region and was told that there are far more cancer diagnoses in that area than most of Newfoundland and Labrador. It only makes sense that all the contamination to this once beautiful land is a contributing factor, in my opinion. In an CBC article linked below, an American veteran claims he guarded a secret stash of nuclear weapons in Newfoundland and claims his government would rather see him dead than admit to violations of international law. His name was Almond Scott and he worked as a guard at Naval Station Argentia between 1963 and 1965 and claims that years before the Canadian government allowed nuclear weapons on Canadian soil, he was guarding them at a secret weapons lab in Placentia Bay. Scott, who is now deceased, claimed the cancer that ravaged his body was caused by his assignment of guarding the secret weapons. Apparently, the U.S. government refused to help him and would not give him his own service records. Maybe this was because they would then be admitting to the Canadian government that they had nuclear materials on Canadian soil without informing them. Scott was quoted as saying it was a different time. We did our duty, and we didn't ask questions. 
Scott had top-secret clearance, and it was his assignment to guard the heavily barricaded weapons laboratory. What this weapons laboratory is or where it was located is a mystery. Of course, the U.S. government denies that there is proof Scott was exposed to nuclear material at Argentia. The Department of Foreign Affairs told CBC that any questions about nuclear weapons at Argentia would have to go through the Access to Information Act. It has been documented in official reports that certain areas are known to be brownfield land which means real property, the expansion, redevelopment, or reuse of which may be complicated by the presence or potential presence of a hazardous substance, pollutant, or contaminants. In the book U.S. Nuclear Weapons in Canada, it mentions that there were nuclear weapons stored at Argentia. It also states that nuclear weapons were delivered to the base when Captain Tarleton was commander. Supposedly, nuclear weapons were stored at the base from February 1968 to June 1970. Edward Hollett, who writes the Bond Papers, reported as follows. During the Cuban Missile Crisis, complete nuclear weapons were deployed to Argentia. This is one of the major facts that led the federal government to negotiate an agreement with the United States specifically governing American nuclear weapons deployments to Argentia. At other times, nuclear weapons components were there. That is the base housed everything except the cores of fissionable materials that would produce the atomic explosion if the thing worked properly. What do you think of all of this? Can we blame the Americans for the cancer rates in Newfoundland? Argentia wasn't the only base the Americans had constructed on the island of Newfoundland and Labrador. There were several bases constructed and all of them left contaminants behind when they left.